right guys, welcome back to the cockpit here. We're just getting ready to take off. I'll be flying today, left seat departure, no one's in the right seat. No good options off runway 24, so we're just gonna fly it straight ahead, find the crash site. Uh, once we get to 1000, we'll consider a turn back. Uh, anything happens to the engine on the runway, we can come to a complete stop. Um, expecting to rotate way before the 1000 foot markers today, because it's a cold day and we're light. Um, after checking my engine instruments, I'm coming back here. If I don't have airspeed right away, that'll be my sign that something's wrong, we'll come to a stop. Uh, any questions? No one's in the cockpit. You guys got any questions? No? Alright. Alright, we're ready for departure. So come across here, fuel, landing light, mixture, flaps are good. One final check. We're good. Summerville traffic, Mooney 79 or 811, taking off runway 24, Summerville. Alright, runway 24 confirmed. Everything looks good. Let's start rolling out the power. Expect the engine to die here. Waiting for it. Okay. Engine's feeling real good. There's full RPM. Everything's in the green. Airspeed's way alive. There we go. Rotated uh, about 700 feet. Ozzy right here's coming up. Up and locked. It's a bird here. No factor. Okay, flaps up. There's 500 feet. Come back at the power just a little bit. 25. Summerville traffic. Moody 811 departing off the upwind. 24. We'll be uh, northwest bound departure. Summerville. 120. We'll hit IAS mode. We'll hit nav mode. And we will engage the autopilot. Alright, fuel pump and landing light can come off. So well, today we're headed up to uh, Greenville uh, for another angel flight. This is my fourth angel flight. Uh, if you guys are curious what angel flight is, I made a whole video on it. You, I'll put a link right here. You can go back and check that out. It's a beautiful morning. I had one day of vacation left this year. We're going to go to from Greenville to Daniel Field today in Augusta, which is a pretty easy flight. Got about an hour flight up to Greenville, and then uh, it should be about a 30, 40 minute flight down to Daniel Field and then back to Supperville after that. Today is just going to be a flight vlog, so I just, I enjoy these kinds of videos on YouTube, so that's why I make them. Something I've been doing lately, uh, I've been consuming a ton of uh, Mike Bush content. And Mike Bush is, uh, he's an AMP, he's an author, he's, he's pretty well known in the, in the GA community, but um, I knew about him, but hadn't really read any of his books or anything like that. Um, and I also got turned on to his podcast called Ask the A&Ps, which is a fantastic podcast been modifying the way that I run my engine and the way that I uh, just maintain things. I'm learning a ton. Um, obviously, I've got, a, I've got a background in engineering or for a large automotive um, company, so I've got a background in that. So, uh, But I'm learning that I there's a lot of stuff that I just don't know. You know that saying, you don't know what you don't know? Very true, especially when it comes to airplanes, and um, I'm, I'm learning a ton. I love being involved in my, um, the maintenance of my aircraft that I own. I've been involved in all the aircraft that I've owned, all three of them. Very involved, doing my own annuals, own own maintenance. Obviously, I do all of that with um, with an AMP. But regardless, I like to I like to be involved in it. I like to do it. So it's been fun recently. I've been learning a lot and and modifying the way I operate the airplane. And you know, the goal being longevity, right? Yeah, the traffic. Airplanes are expensive. Engines are expensive. So let's make them last as long as we possibly can. I used to run this engine rich of peak. And I almost hate to admit that, knowing everything I know now. But I used to run at Richard Peak, and that's because that's what the POH says. That's what, uh, you know, that's what a lot of people do. Anyway, I was flying by the book, learning and reading these books recently, and thinking about it rationally for myself. Um, I don't do that anymore. I run this engine, lean a peak. I just do a big pull until I get to where I about the fuel flow, given the altitude and RPM that I'm running. That I think. And then I just verify with the EGTs that I am in fact Lena Peak and I just did do that. And then I look at my cylinder head temperatures, which are your best proxy for uh, cylinder head pressures, which we do not have information on in the cockpit. So uh, I make sure my cylinder head temperatures are... Columbia Approach on 124, plot 15, good day. 2415, 811, yeah. Columbia Approach, good morning, duty 7, 9, or 811, 6,500. 79 Columbia, good morning. Columbia altimeter 3051. 3051, 811, mate. Alright, so, um, the cylinder head temperatures are your best proxy for your cylinder head pressures, which is really what you want to monitor or avoid high cylinder head pressures if you want uh, your engine to last. So, 
And like Cummings, they want a tree climb. Cruise below 400, back 420 in the climb. I'd never see that in this airplane. I never see that. Red line, by the way, is 500. If you read the book, if you read the the TCDS or the this engine, it's it's super high. If you, yeah, if you, if you see 500 degrees cylinder at temperature, altimeter three zero five. Well, especially in this plane. My concern in this airplane is the exact opposite. I can't keep my cylinder head temperatures warm enough. My hottest cylinder right now is 327. My coolest is 289. With, with leaded fuel, I mean, if you had unleaded fuel, be no concern. With leaded fuel, the concern is lead scavenging problem. Lead fuel, I think, I think what I read was that it scavenges best at above 380. Do you really want to cruise about 380? That's like the perfect temperature for uh, leaded fuel in these engines. Again, if, if it was unleaded, cooler cylinder at Chapter 6 for Alpha Tango Columbia. Good would morning. be great. Limiter 3051. Um, so that's my concern. So I'm looking forward to having an annual coming up in a month. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Chrono 33. Can looking forward to boroscoping the cylinders. I've not pulled these spark plugs or done a uh, boroscope inspection this year yet. So the annual is coming up. It's going to be a great opportunity to do that. Looking really forward to it, especially because I changed my my leaning procedure about a month ago, and uh, so I'm curious to see if I can see that in the engine data, which I've been pulling and uploading to Savvy Aviation online and analyzing. So, um, yeah, I'm learning a lot. I'm looking forward to taking better care of this airplane and making it last um, way beyond TBO. That's the goal. All right, back to the flight here. All right, so here we are, guys. We just left uh, the Charleston area, Somerville. Uh, about to cross over Columbia and then over to GMU. So, just to get ahead of the airplane, GMU, the tower is 119.9. I'll just write that down. 119.9. Weather is 127075. We can get that in here. Uh, current weather at GMU this morning was calm and cold. Negative 3 degrees, wind's calm, so perfect. Always nice calm winds flying up to Greenville or that area because uh, there's no turbulence usually. Unless the wind is going that way, which it rarely is flying, going west. Usually you get turbulence and mountain waves coming over the mountains uh, on the side. So, should be a nice day today. My uh, flying over Orangeburg right now. My dad actually lives in Orangeburg. He's actually sick. Um, so he lives up here for the one twenty six point departure. We get the, the care that he needs one zero for his sick ride direct stamps. And, um, it totally sucks. A lot. But, uh, he's up here in Orangeburg. I'm working on getting him moved to a, a facility closer to me. I could fly here. It's a pretty quick flight, but it's be a long drive. It's still in Texas, don't love him. Yeah, just make it sad. Three zero five two. And he has, he has nobody. He's not married. I have a little brother, but he lives in Chicago. He has no, no friends, nothing like that. He has a bro two brothers, but they live in Texas, so he's super alone up here, and that bumps me out. But I don't have any choice than to uh, have them up here. So, what am I talking about? This makes terrible content. All right, all right, guys. Let me do this. Let me walk you guys through. Turn the camera here. Should get a better view of the panel. Okay, so we're all set up here in cruise. Uh, coming across the top here, GPS engaged. That's uh, that's confirmed. Autopilot's on, of course. Altitude 6,500. We're at 6,500. Got a kernel temperature setting. Everything else is good. We I always sync my heading too, just in case I need to switch off of nav mode ever. Um, it just makes it much quicker. It's just one button. I can just hit heading. The plane's not going to turn because it's it's synced to my current heading. Um, so if you need to change your CDI or change your course for an ILS approach, um, that's where that's handy. So to get ahead of the airplane here, again, we are, we're on VFR flight following, so... Um, we're not going to be assigned any altitudes, likely. It, it can happen, but uh, likely we will not. So, I think we can use our VNAV feature. So, we'll come into our flight plan here. Oh, I'll start out here. Come home, come to flight plan. You can also do it from here. You just hit that button there and go over to the flight plan. GMU, it's at 1,000 feet or 1,100, so we'll say 2,100 feet is pattern altitude. So, we want to be at 2,100 feet. And I always put that about two miles prior to get to the airport. That gives me a good descent rate. This is if I'm not doing any approaches or anything like that. If you load an approach or an arrival, it's going to give you VNAV um, targets. In this case, we do, we're just flying direct GMU, so we don't have any VNAV targets. So, a long track, negative two miles, at 2100 feet, save. Now I come in here and it adds another line to my uh, flight plan, GMU minus two, which means 
Do not call my Alpha 4 GMU at 2100. That's where I want to be. Okay, then I come back to the map here. And now we've got our top of the set calculated at 40 minutes. So if we come out here too, and you look at the map, you can see POD along our path here. That's where our top of descent is at. Um, and 40 minutes from now, that's when we'll hit that. And if I hit VNAV and select an altitude below my current altitude, it will descend to that constraint at that time, at that location. So um, I'm not going to set that up right now because there's no need for it. Um, but this just gives you good, you know, additional awareness. So I know that I'm not going to have to start descending in, you know, for another 39 minutes. You can do all this calculations in your head, but, you know, you got a, G, a GTN 750, you might as well use it. Alright guys, well, it's 8.30 here, we've got about another 38 minutes of the flight left. Uh, once we get closer to GMU, I will uh, turn the cameras back on, and uh, we'll catch the landing into GMU. Talk to you guys in a little while. Peace. Well, about 90 seconds from our top of descent here. I'll show you guys how I do this I'm using the VNAV feature. So, turn the camera here. All right. So, you can see top of descent here, been at 25 seconds. That's already set up. We set up the VNAV earlier. Top of descent here, you can see along our path right in front of us. The only thing I need to do is get this to start descending. And if I don't want to use vertical speed, again, we're using going to use the VNAV. I'll show you how that works. Select our altitude that we want to go to. So I bugged 2100, you heard it just say vertical track. Now all I gotta hit is VNAV. Come over here, I see that VNAV is armed. And I've got a, well, I'm calling it a Chevron. The jet the Chevron coming down. So as soon as we intercept that, the airplane's gonna start descending and all I need to do is adjust my power so that I don't overspeed the aircraft in our 500 foot per minute descent, which I have set up here in my VNAV. I got a VS target here of 500 feet per minute. So there we go. VNAV is engaged, ALT-S is armed, means altitude selected. So it's going to go down to our selected altitude. If we were on an arrival and we had an altitude constraint, it would say uh, ALT-V, um, and that would indicate that it's going to, the altitude it's going to stop at is via a constraint of the GPS. So here we go, just started descending. When I descend, I like to, I, I don't like to, I have to pull back the power or I will break the NE even at a 500 foot per minute descent. So, I like to be right around 20 inches, maybe 21 if it's smooth, and get right up to the NE. That's it. Let's relead it, because we're not needing as much, uh... There we go. We've got our air still open, that's it. Now we're descending. Hey, it's clear, temperature 2, deep wind line at 6, altimeter is 3049. Landing and departing, runway 1, visual approach. PFR departure, advise the direction of flight. If you require flight call, you might have a valid procedure request for destination and type aircraft. All pilots shall read back all sort of instructions. Coyotes engaged have been spotted in the field. Utilize caution. Multiple airports in the vicinity. Advise on this contact. Be of this information, Papa. Got an absolutely beautiful view of the mountains. I love flying up here. This is gorgeous. Something else cool you can do on four flight. I don't know if you guys know this. If you use your measure function like that, and then you come back and hit profile, it'll show you exactly, let me watch here, along that profile, what you're going to hit. Move it around. There you go, so that's along our path here. We're going to hit the class Charlie. But we're not going to hit a mountain, which is really nice. One of the things they tell you in flight school uh, is you don't want to fly your plane into the side of a mountain. So you want to try to avoid that. Money 811, are you familiar with the local area? Uh, I'm familiar with the airspace, but uh, why are you asking 811? Oh. Uh, we just have a bunch of people trying to land at the wrong airports around here, so uh, just make sure you're straight familiar with the area so you don't try to land at the closed runway at Donaldson, basically. Rod to that, yeah. We're, we are familiar with Donaldson. We're headed uh, DMU right now, 811. Money 811, appreciate it. Contact Green with Tower 119.9. Have a good day. 19.9811. Yep. And rebuild tower. Our booty 798115 file south deep with Papa inbound to land. Cover 798111. Grab that tower. Continue about runway one. Continue for runway one. 798111. All right. Autopilot disconnected. We'll hand flat the rest of the way. Okay. Gas on the tank that I want. Undercarriage mixture prop to go. Switches to go. Seat belts are on. Return final. Slow it down and drop our gear because we are getting pretty close. There's 120. Down lock pulled indicating. Close our alt air. Two pumps. One, two. 
Man Tower, Mooney 811, uh, about a two mile final runway one. Mooney 811, runway one, cleared to land, wind is very blood five. Clear to land, runway one, seven nine or eight one one. All right, here we go. Fuel pump landing lights on. Make sure full rich, prop, in. That's not to flaps, we are high, that's okay. Speed is good, so we could trade a little bit of that. There we go. There's 90 mile an hour, no turns below that, but since we are and have no turns left, we can get below 90. And start looking at our final approach speed. We got one notch of flaps left, so let's go through our dump track gas on the tank I want. Undercarriage down and indicating for sure. Mixture prop and switches are set. Last notch of flaps, a little bit of power drag us in. I just put my hand on the trim just to make sure it's working, and it is. Runway one confirmed already. GMU confirmed on the map here. So we're landing at the right runway. There's three airports around here, so you gotta gotta pay attention. That's why the controller asked us. All right, we'll crab it in. 85 is good. Both down to 80 over the fence. All right, gears down, gears down. Runway one. Okay, there's 84. So that's be will be about perfect over the numbers. We're going to the jet center, so. I'm going to set it down right around the 1,000 foot markers. Bad in, gears down, gears down. Runway 1, confirm we're landing. Just before him, that's fine too. We'll go left at Delta, he's not telling us anything, so we're just going to do it anyway. Usually the tower hands you off. They didn't tell me anything. 1, 2, 1, 2, 5. Greenville Ground Mooney 811, clear of one at Delta, headed over to the Jetson. Mooney 811 tower, make a right turn there, Alpha. Cross show Mooney 1028, turn right to the Alpha 5, base of the tower. We're looking for Alpha 5, which I see up there. Also got a really nice map here, but I'll have to read the signs just in case. Thank Greenville Ground Tower, so it's the runway, runway line line comes off at the Jet Center. Oh, I parked behind a jet, so now all I smell is jet fuel, which is kind of nice. All right, guys, that's going to end this one. Appreciate you guys coming along. I'm going to go get my Angel Flight passenger and then head over to Augusta. I should not have parked behind this jet. I'm realizing now my airplane is getting knocked around. I'm going to put the parking brake on. <laughs> Hopefully the front of my plane doesn't fell. All right, catch you guys in the next one. If you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to. All that jazz. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.